Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. This was uh, originally made for the Aphasia Access Leadership Summit, Brag and Steal, and we thought we'd record it just so we can have it for um, people interested just as an update to progress. So my name is Bree Stark. I am an assistant professor at Indiana University Bloomington, and I'm presenting on behalf of my colleagues, Dr. Lucy Bryant, Laura Murray, Lucy Dipper, and Dirk Denowden. And we comprise the steering committee of Focus Aphasia. So Focus Aphasia stands for Fostering Quality of Spoken Discourse in Aphasia. And you can see our website listed there at the top. So I thought what we could do is give a little bit of background as to uh, why our working group exists and then a little bit more about the working group itself. So the motivation for creating Focus Aphasia was to improve the state of research and evidence in spoken discourse in aphasia. There's been a growing amount of research since the 1980s, and our goal is really to bring together like-minded and interested parties uh, to work together to really uh, create research that will achieve the goal of improving discourse in assessment and uh, for use as a treatment outcome as well. So really a more holistic idea of discourse analysis. So some of the reasons we created Focus Aphasia, currently no reporting standards exist. And by reporting standards, we mean best practices. Right? And this has led to inconsistent information in research studies. So um, not reporting everything which would help to reproduce or replicate findings. Uh, and this has also led to an inability to conduct meta-analyses. This inability really interferes with the ability to make evidence-based recommendations. And it's one of the reasons why discourse wasn't considered as part of the core outcome set for the recently published work from the Roma Consortium. We also have an inadequate understanding of the psychometric properties like reliability, validity of spoken discourse measures. When I say measures, I mean things that are extracted from the discourse, which can be linguistic, like mean length of utterance, for example, or percentage of nouns. And that can range all the way to more macrostructural measures. So taking into account um, correct information units at a more linguistic but functional level and working our way up to more discourse level, like measures of story grammar, for example. It's really difficult for a single study or an institution or group to accrue the sample size big enough to address many of these issues. A lot of work has been done using Aphasia Bank and the Talk Bank project out of Carnegie Mellon. Um, but in general, a working group is really nice because we can come together to leverage all of our different areas and our um, recruitment ability to try and address some of these issues. So it's really a, a group idea um, to try and create some studies that are able to be done in tandem at several different places. And the overall goal or the impact that we foresee um, is that you know, discourse becomes a core outcome or at least used in a, um, well, used more commonly in clinical assessment and in research and is used well. So it has, it has psychometric properties that support its use and it, it plays a role in creating uh, treatment goals, it plays a role in treatment and it plays a role in assessment. So this is the focus of aphasia. Uh, overall how it functions, I guess is a way of saying it. So at the top, you've got the stakeholders. So we are just now engaging with people with aphasia and their loved ones to make sure that we are working toward a shared vision and goal and that our work uh, has value to these individuals. You can see in the middle is the steering committee who I'm presenting on behalf of today. And then we right now have two task forces. Um, one is called best practices and the other is called methodology and data quality. Within those, there are leadership teams that are elected. Uh, right now, it's looking about every year to year and a half. Those leadership teams drive forward studies. They create new ideas. The members at large uh, are engaged through our interactive events. They're engaged by the leadership team. If there's a study that's ongoing, if they want to have um, a consensus discussion about it, a planning meeting about it, participation in it, recruitment for it, um, that is where our members are um, used. And anyone can join, it's completely free. On our website, you can add yourself to the member directory, which is how everyone finds each other. And then we also have a Slack channel where we um, will have discussions. So the goal is to create a network of interested and knowledgeable parties to address the feasible and meaningful problems that we just mentioned. 
and we want to improve the state of spoken research first in research, and then we want to move this to clinical settings, so work toward more implementation science. So here are some projects we're currently working on. Um, an eDelphi expert survey to establish those best practices that we mentioned we're currently missing. Just finished round two, one more round to go. Thank you if anyone here has participated in that. Uh, we just completed an international survey of researchers and clinicians to identify barriers and other trends in discourse analysis, and that's just been resubmitted. Um, and we're currently curating free workshops and lecture series. We've had at least three to four since 2019 when we first began. Um, thank you to those who have participated as well as those who have given the lecture series and workshops. And we're also currently analyzing some test retest data from a recent virtual study, um, thanks to some ASHA funding in my lab, um, as well as using some data that exists in aphasia bank. So our specific reason today, we want to grow our membership. So if you're interested, we would love to have you and we have a variety of different ways to engage with you. Please contact any of us. Um, and we want to expand as well um, our membership to other stakeholders. So we want to make sure that we are engaging at, at every level and making sure that our work does have value. And the last thing is we want to curate discourse related resources on our website for all audiences. So research oriented, clinical oriented and stakeholders. Uh, and we do need a little help in doing that. So if you're interested, again, please find our contact information on our website. Thanks for tuning in.